Good day everyone. So this will be uh, the week two of our lesson in general mathematics and we are going to discuss for this week rational function and this will be the first video in rational function. There will be four. So this will be the first part. To begin with, let us have a review. Uh, what, what What is our lesson last meeting if if uh, you're going to recall our lesson is about functions, piecewise function, we also evaluate functions, and we also perform operations on functions. And what do you remember on polynomial function? Let us have the definition of polynomial function. A polynomial function P of degree N is a function that can be written in the form P of X equals A sub N X raised to N plus a sub n minus 1 x raised to n minus 1 up to a sub 1 x plus a sub 0 which is the constant term. We all know that uh, these uh, a sub 0, a sub 1 up to a sub n are all real numbers but uh, we are provided that or there is a condition that a sub n or the leading the numerical coefficient of the leading term must not be equal to 0. So n is a positive integer okay so n is a positive integer meaning to say uh, it is from 1 to 3 4 5 6 and so on okay each summand is a term of the polynomial function so the constants we have here the constants a sub 0, a sub 1, a sub 2 up to a sub n. As I have said, they are the numerical coefficients. And a sub n here is what we call the leading coefficient. While this a sub n x raised to n is called the leading term. And the last term is called the constant term. Now let me present the objective for this lesson and that is to represent real life situation using rational functions. So the local barangay received a budget of 100,000 to provide medical checkups for the children in the barangay. So the amount is to be allotted equally among all children in the barangay. Now, we have to write an equation representing the relationship of the allotted amount per child, y, okay, versus the total number of children. So, the question here is, how are we going to compute for y? And we all know that for us to compute for y, we must divide this, or it means y, the allotted amount per child, we have your y, the allotted amount per child is equal to 100,000 100,000 over over x so that is how it will be so in other words for us to obtain the allotted amount given the number of children we just need to divide 100,000 for instance in this case 100,000 to 10, and that will give us 10,000. And if the number of child or children is 1,000, 100,000 divided by 1,000 will be 100. In this second problem, this is a continuation of the first problem, a philanthropist wants to supplement the budget allotted for each child by providing an additional 750 for each child in the barangay. So, we will let g of x to represent this new amount allotted for each child. So, we have to construct a function representing this relationship. In other words, uh, if we or we will have g of x we will have g of x as 100,000 100, over x. 
So since the amount allotted for them will be added or will have an additional 750, so we're just going to add 750 to f of x. So that will be the g of x. In other words, uh, whatever value we compute for y earlier, we're just going to add it by 750. Say for example, uh, a while ago we computed that if there are 10 child or 10 children rather, 10 children who will be receiving the assistance and we computed that the allotted amount per child is 10,000 so 10,000 will be added or 750 will be added to 10,000 and that will be 10,750 okay what if there are 1,000 children that will be uh, receiving or there are 1,000 children in the barangay how much will they receive so a while ago we computed the amount allotted for each child when the number of child is or children is 1,000 as 100. So 100 plus 750, that will be 850. Now to give you an example or additional example, so an object is to travel a distance of 10 meters. So we have to express velocity v as a function v of t of travel time t in seconds. Okay, based on uh, our lesson in science or physics, if I'm not mistaken, uh, v of t, or velocity as the function of time, is equal to distance over time. So, uh, we all know that the distance here is 10 meters. If it is 10 meters, we can replace d by 10. So, the resulting rational or resulting function will be v of t is equal to 10 over t. Now, we are going to replace t by seconds or the number of seconds because this is or the velocity must be meter per second. So if it is 1, we have 10 because 10 divided by 1 is 10. So 10 meters per second. How about if it is 2 or the number of seconds is 2? So that will be 5, 10 divided by 5. For 4, 10 divided by 4, 2.5. For 5, that will be 2. And for 10, that will be 1. Okay? Now, for this, uh, I'm just going to read this, but I'm not going to discuss the answers. It is for you to explore or to answer this one on your own. Suppose that c of t is equal to 5t all over t squared plus 1. So, so we are going to represent the concentration of a drug in a patient's bloodstream TRs after the drug was administered. So we have to construct a table of values for C of T for C equals 1, 2, 5, and 10. So we have to round off the answer to three decimal places. Now, it is for you to use the function to compute for the value of C of T. Now, uh, this one will be given in your learning activity sheet and I'm not going to discuss this anymore. So, a fence is to enclose a rectangular vegetable form with an area of 400 square meters. If x is the length of one side of this fence, find a function p of x representing the perimeter of the fencing materials required. So, those are the questions. Take a look at it. Okay, this is the question number two. This is the question number three. This is question number four. And this will be question number five. Now, uh, this is also available in my website. Feel free to download it if you want to have a copy of this. And uh, if you have any question, you may comment it below and or you may send a PM or message to my Facebook page. It's 
Sir Paul Jorel. Now, uh, thank you for listening and have a nice day ahead.